So while I'm waiting for some uh, components to arrive in the mail for the IFAC solar power generator that I'm, I've been working on for the past couple of days, I decided to revisit a couple of my smaller kits and update them a little bit. Uh, this one is kind of a small to medium kit that uh, would you know be good for like a backpacking situation um, it's waterproof I put a uh, six volt two watt solar panel on the outside and it uh, did have a 12 volt battery which was kind of overkill for this kind of a unit so I pulled that out put in uh, a pair of A123 Nanotech lithium iron batteries wired in series and I hooked that up to this uh, charge controller that you see right there. It's also a battery management system so it balances the charge coming into these batteries and keeps them equal. These batteries are pretty cool you know for their size each battery is 3.3 volts in series, so you get, uh, what is, three, I'm sorry, yeah, 3.3 volts, so it would be 6.6 .6 volts in series. But each one is capable of char uh, discharging at a maximum of 70 amps. So that's, that's pretty uh, impressive for that size of a battery. Um, with the added room, that I got by downsizing the battery. I uh, upgraded some of the first aid uh, bandages, and boo-boo bag here. Got some uh, hemostatic uh, clotting, um, wound seal they call it. Similar to uh, quick clot or Celox that you'll see in the bigger kits. Um, cutting agents. Uh, this is your ubiquitous uh, survival pack with all your knickknacks, water purification tablets, which also, by the way, I put uh, uh, Aquamira um, water filter straw in here so that if you, and this is a water collection bag so you can filter some water and have it safe to drink. This is uh, down to 0.1 micron, so it's, it's a very effective filter. It'll filter out all of the bacteria, pathogens, clostridium, um, uh, all of the uh, other nasties that you're gonna see in standing water. Uh, little razor saw. Um, survival blanket. The other thing uh, I've always had issues with is that I always try to find the best alternative for fire starting because that's that can be a challenge in in a windy or rainy situation. You have things like uh, wet fire. You know you can uh, use some of these to start your fire. In some of my previous videos, I came up with, uh, I purchased some uh, powdered uh, magnesium and I would uh, impregnate some tinder wicks with uh, that powdered magnesium and they would light up in a heartbeat, which I, I really like and they burn a lot hotter than just, a lot of people will soak these in uh, some petroleum jelly or something like that and that works but the you can't believe the fire starting capabilities of powdered magnesium on on a cotton wick like this it's 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 amazing anyway um, i went ahead and i used to see if i got it here somewhere thought i had well i used to of course I don't. 
Oh, here it is. The uh, thing I, I tried in the past was one of these little, I thought I'd try them out because overall they're kind of cute. And it's basically a little butane lighter, but uh, the biggest problem I had is every time that you want to use it, the the wick had uh, dried up, or um, yeah, the wick basically. It's a cotton plug, and. Uh, it never had, when you needed it, it never had the ability to be functional. So I went ahead and started looking around and one thing I like, technology, and this, uh, this caught my eye. This is a Tesla plasma lighter, no fuel. Um, basically you charge it up like I've got it set up right now. I've got it plugged in with a USB um, cable into the uh, lighter itself. And with the convenience of the USB port that I wired into the charge controller, all I have to do is to, let's say I'm out camping and I want to start a fire and it, uh, if it was a, a gas uh, powered lighter and you forgot to bring your, your butane or whatever it is that it uses and you tried to use it and it would not function, then you have to revert obviously to your, your bad weather matches these right here that you can use in rain or wind and hopefully you'll get it started but I just I just never really liked that idea so let's say that the beginning of the day you decide that you might want to start a fire later so you just check and notice that you, it could probably use a charge so all you do is flip the switch on on your charger here and there you go you know the uh, indicator light on the USB is showing that the uh, USB port is getting a charge and as you can see the lighter is taking a charge so a lot more convenient a lot safer because you don't have to carry a flammable liquid with you and when it's fully charged I mean it'll light anything obviously plasma is, is pretty damn hot so you put that with uh, magnesium impregnated uh, tinder wicks and you're gonna have the ability to start a fire in a tornado almost I'm exaggerating but obviously it, it would be very very capable of getting a good fire started easily so that's my uh, my uh, update on this kit. Um, it should be, well it is all, all, all put together so it, I just gotta repack it and I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit and charge up that lighter. I just got it in the mail. So this actually is going in the uh, IFAC kit outside so Depending on what I eventually decide on this, I will uh, probably get another one for this kit too. And finishing off, this is what I call my boo-boo box. Um, this is basically just something that you could stick in your in a cargo pocket. And I noticed that uh, the this is the charge controller in this one and basically the, I mounted the solar panel on the outside again and ran it through the, and it should be charging through that port right there. 
but there is an indicator light on this board that is supposed to light up when it is taking a charge and I noticed yesterday that it was not. So I've been running some tests on this to make see if it was the charging side of the board or if there was a, a bad circuit in the entire system. And if I unplug this here, plug it into, see if I can get this in here. And you can see there's the uh, light on, on this lighter showing it's taking a charge. I don't know if I can get this oriented right, but uh, you can see that the charging light on the USB port is receiving a, a good charge. So the battery side of the charge cycle is functional. I'm leaning towards the idea that the solar side of the uh, charge controller is defective at this point. I'm running further tests on it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace the uh, the charge controller. This is a cute little cute little like I said boo-boo box. Very small. You can put it in a cargo pocket like I said. You can have a fully functional uh, survival with also I had a, a smaller uh, smaller first aid similar to this and a survival blanket and it still fit in here so I'll continue to work on that and that's basically an update on my couple of my smaller kits and I'm really Excited to see uh, how that uh, IFAC survival trauma box, which will actually be something that will be carried in in a car, because it, it it's gonna when it's done, it's gonna be pretty pretty substantial. It should weigh about I want to say about four or five pounds, but it will have food and water for a couple of days. It'll have a full trauma kit in it. It'll have a pretty extensive survival kit in it and it'll have a lighting system that'll put out 16,000 lumens. So it'll be a all around um, multifunctional box that I've got high hopes for. Anyway, I bored you guys enough. I'm gonna turn you loose. I gotta figure out what what to cook for dinner tonight. You guys have fun. Be safe. The desert gold out. <laughs>